what is going on all you money makers welcome to a live episode of creating for money i'm over here hanging out on bullhorn.fm and i'm excited to uh to be on this platform to be going live on a podcast hosting platform so i'm really excited i'm going to actually start a clubhouse room right now as well and start the conversation about what are some things you should consider before launching your podcast so i guess some comments coming over here on on uh, facebook i do believe so let's jump over here and see what's oh, hey what's up katie brinkley uh let me know hey let me know if you want to join if you want to join the conversation i can send you an invite link uh, it says she's multitasking to the max um i am on bullhorn streaming to youtube to facebook oh i forget to turn on twitch i probably could do that real quick if i wanted to with the one little click of a button here on restream uh, no i'm on twitch as well cool so on twitch and also here on clubhouse um so kind of multi-streaming multitasking uh, excited to jump into some things to consider before launching your podcast uh <laughs> katie says uh, you are the the master multitasker um I, I i don't know about that so we'll see you know i'm trying to use club deck here uh as well we'll see if it will start um don't know if it don't know if it will it's, it doesn't look like it's working so maybe i'm ditching ditching club deck i'm ditching clubhouse right now uh so unfortunately that is that is the name of the game. What's up, Elu from from Belize? Good to see you. I invited a couple other friends on on the platform as well, so uh, maybe they'll join me. Maybe they won't to see what their thoughts are about stuff that you should consider before launching your podcast. Now, I know podcasting is super fun. It is super kind of easy. It's kind of low hanging fruit. Like you don't have to have a bunch of gear, equipment, camera lights, all this fun stuff. You can literally just record on your phone and upload it to anchor and put it all out all over the world however what is your goal before doing this now i'm going to share some stuff that i didn't do very well yeah katie said fail uh about clubhouse yeah it is a fail and unfortunately my roadcaster pro also failed me so it is it's sitting here ready to be boxed up and shipped far far away to get worked on uh, and I'm using a different device that doesn't have the capability to do what I want it to uh, or what I need it to as far as bringing in Clubhouse and Clubhouse Audio. So I might try Club Deck one more time uh, to see if I can go live over on Clubhouse, but it doesn't look like it's working out so well. Uh, so if you're joining me here on Facebook or uh, Bullhorn or wherever, appreciate that. And I'm gonna, I am going to try one more time to jump on to... Um, to jump on oh you hear my little three-year-old guy we've had a big day today going to the beach doing all those fun things and he hasn't slept all day so now it's time for him to, to go to sleep so i'm sure that's what he is is fussing about doesn't want to do that and uh, all right i'm going to give up on club deck i'm going to get right into what i want to talk about today which is what what are the things that you should consider before you launch your show before you launch your podcast now when i first launched the show i just launched it i kind of don't play by the rules and not that there is any rules in podcasting, but I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't care. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, just gonna start and see what happens. And I started and, and nothing happens. Uh, and before I jump into it, Nick, what's going on there in the chat, Nick over here on Bullhorn, always super supportive of the shows going on over here. So if you're a creator and you're looking for a new place to create, reach out to me and I'll get you in touch with, uh, with Nick over at Bullhorn and maybe you can come onto the platform as creator. Super fun. Uh, so, so anyway, a couple things I did not do is I didn't really think about, you know, podcasting as a business. I didn't think about making money with a show. I didn't think about an audience. I just thought about what do I like and what do I want to talk about? Now, luckily I kind of dove into a niche of fishing that worked out really well, but even in that I didn't consider, all the work that would go into creating a live show, creating a podcast, doing all these other things. So I want to kind of jump into a few tips. If you're on the fence and you're thinking about starting a podcast, or maybe you already started a podcast and you just need some direction of maybe why your audience isn't growing or, or whatnot, I, I hope to help you out tonight. So let me jump over here to my Google Docs where I keep all my notes and let's jump into it. So the first thing you, you want to think about is what 
what's the purpose of your podcast? Is it a podcast for your business to bring to market with, to bring brand awareness? Is it a hobby podcast, like hobby content, uh, like fishing? Like I have a fishing podcast. It's awesome. Is it a community podcast about your community? Like what is the objective when it comes to creating your show? Like what is your overall mission? What is your overall goal? Is it to make money with it? Is it to just be a marketing tool? You think about those. And so I see a lot of times when people start podcasts or they start creating content in general, this isn't just for podcasting, but content in general, it's really important that you need to be proactive and not reactive. Um, I think oftentimes we get this idea, we get inspired and we go, okay, cool. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to jump right in and we're going to, we're just going to, you know, throw mud on the wall and see what happens. And I love this approach, but it didn't really work for me. So oftentimes we're reactive. So we're creating content and then we're reacting to whatever the outcome is. So if a lot of people are watching or downloading our show or if no one's watching or downloading our show, we're often reacting and trying to scramble in the moment um, when it comes to to that. So we're often, you know, if it's if we want to make money or whatever, if we're not if we're not doing the thing that we think we wanted it to do, then we are being super reactive and not proactive. Uh, so reactive, maybe you said this, ah, I'll just make a podcast and, and maybe I'll make money. Maybe some people listen. Maybe I'll figure out my audience. I'll just figure it out later. Not a big deal. I can tell you I've done this before with more than just podcasting, but with businesses and what have you. And I always end up going, uh, holding the bag, one, because it's going to cost me time, energy, money, time with my family. And then I go, oh, wait a second. I'm just not. I'm just not doing anything. But proactive says, hey, who's my target audience? Who am I going after? What do I want the outcome to be? And how do I get to where I want to go? Like, what is the purpose of me creating this content? Now, before I go on, I do want to shout out to my friend Brent Basham. He says, show me the money. Wait, wrong show? Nope, this is a the content. This is a creating for money show. So Brent, you're in the right place, and hopefully some of these tips. So what I've done is I've I've joined uh, Bullhorn.fm to create some content on their platform in the form of live streaming. So this won't be on my main RSS feed. It will just be on my Bullhorn feed, and I want to use this to talk about some stuff, just like tips and tricks of content creation in general, not just making money with your show. However, I think a lot of these tips and tricks will get you closer to doing this. Oh yeah, right there you go. So ringing that cash register. Uh, so so proactive is saying, hey, I'm going to plan. I'm going to go. I'm going to find my, my niche, my audience, and all that kind of stuff. So the next thing I'm going to jump into, before I do, I'm going to switch over. I need multiple screens, by the way. I'm over here trying to rock out with one screen down here for my computer and then my iPad as a teleprompter, uh, that kind of thing. So just want to jump over and make sure nobody on Bullhorn is saying hello. But the first thing I want to do is I want to really want to, I want to be in control of my show. If it's a live stream show, if it's a podcast, if it's a blog, if it's a book, I mean, whatever it is, you want to be in full control. So you want to control who you're talking to, when you're talking to them, how you're talking to them, or what you're talking to them about. Uh, so one thing I didn't do that I super... I don't really regret because I learned and now I can teach other people is pick a niche, pick a, or a niche, however you want to say it, but choose your audience. Don't let your audience choose you. You choose your audience. You be in control and command and say, you know what? I want to talk to baseball players. I want to talk to baseball coaches. I want to talk to fishing fishermen. I want to talk to fishing guides. I want to talk to tackle store, you know, whoever it is that you want to create content for, Make that decision up front. Now, a lot of people go, well, I just don't know. I, you know, I want to be all things to all people all the time. And look at Joe Rogan. He does it. <laughs> you know, he talks to whoever he wants, however. And I just want to do that show because it's super easy. All I have to do is hit record. And I'm telling you, if you dive into it, Joe Rogan still has a niche audience that he's talking to. Um, so figure out what is this small, it maybe it could be a small audience, maybe it's a large audience, but how can you start targeting information that way. So do your research up front. So, so I said, okay, saltwater fishing, done. Saltwater fishing on the coast of North Carolina. All right, even better, even more niche. Now, where do I go to find the information that these people want? Um, so get a small audience or start small, but you want them to be engaged. I mean, Katie Brinkley is a, is a master marketing person on here. And 
you don't just want to just be like, oh, okay, whatever, you know what, I'm just going to go go do anything, everything, I'm going to be everything for everybody because you'll be nothing to everyone. Um, but you want to you want to really pick your niche, pick your target, and start moving toward that target. So go into Facebook groups. Like, this is what I did. I went into Facebook groups to figure out what are people asking? What kind of questions are they asking? What do they need help with? I went and watched YouTube videos. What are they doing? What do they need help with? What kind of content can we create to answer these questions, to solve these pain points, to entertain people, you know, whatever that is. And you might be a comedy podcast and that's a part of it. Like, oh, these people are struggling with this, mental health or whatever, and I want to bring joy to their life. You're still solving a problem, so figure out what is it that you want to solve. Pick your niche. And this is really important, not just because it makes content creation easier, it makes your research easier, it makes everything about building your show easy. Er. Now, it might be hard to pick that niche up front, but it makes it a lot less um, friction in the process. Um, my friend uh, Brent over here said, just just book a bunch of celebrities and you're golden. Hmm. 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 Oh, Brent, let's see. No. Well, where's it at? I thought I had like an er, but I don't have a, I don't have an er sound. So uh, I'll have to put that one in there. Um, all right. Cool. So, so understand your audience. Understand the content that they want. Understand the problem that you're going to solve. Uh, Ryan Sullivan said, understand that if you don't niche, people will have to listen solely because they like you first. Joe started inviting his friends on his podcast. People stay because they liked him, the guest, and the format. If you want to start a conversational interview show like Joe, just expect it to take 10 times longer. I 100% agree. Unless you are super entertaining and you already have an audience, then that, you know, it could work, it could work for you. Like he said, if people like you first already, uh, that will work. And Brent, I know you're being sarcastic. I would expect nothing less. And if you or Katie want to jump on the show, feel free to, uh, to ping me or say it here and I'll drop you a link and you guys can, uh, jump on, come on live. You can see the guest side of Bullhorn as well. All right, so so choose your niche, niche, pick your audience. And not only does it make it easy for you, but it makes it easy for people to trust you. Uh, you know, I think about this when, um, you know, Michael Jordan, I, I was, that's the only time I ever watched sports was when Michael Jordan played basketball for the Chicago Bulls and my family and I would sit around. I think the whole world was sitting around at whatever year that was watching Michael Jordan play basketball and Dennis Rodman and, all, and Scottie Pippen and all these guys. Then when Jordan went and played baseball, I was like, even as a kid, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. What is he doing? Why, why is he doing this? Why is he going to play baseball? Why didn't he stay, you know, stick to basketball? And it didn't even make any sense to me. I mean, maybe it did. Maybe he's an athlete, you know, multi-sports, whatever. I get it now. But even back then, I was confused. I'm like, oh, you're a sellout to ba-? You know, it's like it just doesn't bring consistency with your audience. And so I always think about Michael Jordan playing baseball and how weird it felt for me. And I'm like, okay, let me stick to – in this podcast, in this show, let me stick to this niche audience. Um, so, so yeah, that's what I would, you know, consider doing. And also talking about building trust is consistent quality content. Okay. So think about being consistent. Now I'm not of the mindset and I definitely don't do that on creating for money on the regular RSS feed where I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. I'm just going to jump around and do whatever. Um, you know, I'm not going to be on a schedule all the time. Sometimes I do stuff when I'm inspired. Now that I'm on Bullhorn and I love going live, I might do a little bit more content on here. Uh, but the thing that you want to really think about is, are you showing up for your audience? And now with my fishing show, we're every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, episode drops every single Tuesday without fail for almost 24 months solid. Uh, we just did our 100th episode. There's my dog. My dog wanted to be on the show. Uh, there, we almost did a, we've done 100 episodes, just dropped 100 on Tuesday and not missed one episode. Not one. We've published every single Tuesday. And that's why we have, you know, we'll have 15 to 20,000 people listening and watching our show throughout the hot season of fishing is because we're showing up. We're giving them something for their, for them to expect. And so think about this when you're watching TV. It's like, how do you consume? If you're watching American Idol, American Idol shows up one week, takes a week off, shows up to two weeks later. You know, it's like, you're just like, man, I'm gonna, forget about it, you know. But you want to make people and shows and content a part of your routine. 
And that's the behavior of, of podcast listeners is they want to be a part of your routine and, or a part of you. They want you to be a part of their routine. I literally have podcasts I listen to Monday morning um, I, when I'm taking a shower. Uh, I, I have one I listen to on Thursday when it comes out and I expect those. All right. And I'm looking for them. So consistent quality content is more powerful than inconsistent quantity. A lot of podcasters, a lot of creators that I talk to are just like, oh, it doesn't matter. I will just put out as much content as possible and it not be super quality, super consistent. Uh, but you want it to be consistent quality as well as consistent frequency of dropping. So make sure you can do that. These are things to consider before starting your podcast. Find a niche, figure out what your workflow is going to be. And this might take a little bit of time, but commit. Commit to a show. Commit to saying, okay, I'm going to show up daily. I'm going to show up weekly. I'm going to show up monthly. Uh, you know, whatever that looks like for you, make sure that you can commit to that and have a game plan because what it's going to do here on creating for money, it's going to create opportunities for you down the road to be able to, to show up and, and speak to that consistency and speak to that quality. And then you're going to be able to grow your show, go get a sponsor, do whatever. And, and so these are all things I didn't do in the beginning, the first show or two, but now this show that I have, this is what I'm doing. And so uh, feel, feel free to, uh, to let me know what you think. Is this is this good information? Are you guys getting some value? Is it stirring up your brain if you're watching here live or if you're watching over here on Bullhorn or one of the platforms? Definitely let us know. What's up, Sam? I see Sam uh, in the comments there. And Nick says, consistency can be one of the hardest things. Congrats on getting to 100. I uh, love the content. Bill says, Resty gives me a little fire emoji. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's a bleep. I thought that was uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick says nice lighting today appreciate it Nick and Brent says good stuff Ryan thanks for sending me I just saw your back channel message come in uh, and he says I have a conversational interview so I know so yeah there you go Ryan's, Ryan knows the, the road of Joe Rogan is a little harder than the road of niche alright so we've talked about choose your niche make sure you're going to create consistent quality content just over inconsistent quantity content and make sure you get a frequency that you're going to show up. And I say this is one of the one reasons why we are more successful in our niche of fishing than a lot of podcasters. And I track other podcasters. Like I am following them. I am checking out their channels. I am trying to get an idea of, you know, what they're doing. And I'm spying on the competition to see like, what are we doing? Not that, not that we're like all in competition, but I want to see like, what can we do better than them to show up and be more consistent? So if we're sharing an audience and it comes down to it, like, Oh, two podcast episodes are coming out on the same day. Who are they going to pick? Who are they going to trust more to show up? I, and that's me. That's going to be me. That's who I want it to be. And so think about it that way. Uh, so set a schedule, stick with it and then build systems to allow for time off and out of the studio. You know, I think this is one of the things that and my co-host and I kind of crush it at is we will go hard for several weeks at a time to, we'll, we'll go hard for several weeks at a time to batch record episodes and we'll get three or four episodes. We'll get a month ahead, two months ahead. I think at one point in 2021, we were like 12 episodes ahead of ourselves and it felt great to take a couple weeks off to I took so much time off there from recording. I actually kind of forgot what I was doing when I got back and started sitting at the chair again. I had to like relearn the show, the format, all those kinds of things. Um, so schedule some time to take off. This is a part of pod fade. You know, when people, I think it's like, I think the, the statistic is like seven to 10 episodes for a podcaster to, before they quit. So you, you get fired up, you're like, got this idea, blah, 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 I'm going to sit down, I'm going to talk to my buddy while we have a beer on a Friday night, and it's going to be awesome, we're going to record one time a week and, and not batch record anything, and then next thing you know, seven episodes in, you're out of content, you have no niche, and then you're still drinking beer under the patio, but you're not recording because, well, no one listened to you, and then you're all beat up. So build the systems and show up, uh, show up consistently. Now the third tip here I have for you, the third thing that I wish I would have like really, you know, focused on, and we're focusing on it more in 2022 than ever is to focus on the community. Um, so the old saying that says, you know, the audience comes for the content, but stays for the host. 
This is pretty true from what I've seen. I, and I see people showing up. I see people showing up here on Facebook, on Bullhorn, on Clubhouse, and different places. Uh, just showing up because they like me. It's not because they don't know. I mean, there's people in this chat right now who are chatting who are podcasters, who know all the things I'm already talking about, but they're here to support me because they, they're they fans of, of Billy and what he's doing. And maybe they're fans of the content, maybe they're not, but they came for me, they came for the content originally, and then we've built this relationship. Brent, Katie, Ryan, all these people are established in the, in the audio community. Uh, Nick and Sam on Bullhorn, they're all experienced. They probably don't need any of this information, but they've come in here because they go, hey, you know what? We want to support you. And that is the difference in just having an audience that maybe will show up, maybe won't. And I always kind of give this a little, I guess, analogy or or um, whatever it's called, that if you're a comedian or somebody on stage, say I'm a comedian. This is the easiest thing I can come up with. <laughs> if I'm a comedian and I'm on stage and I'm telling jokes and I'm going through my set and somebody is in the back and they're drinking a beer, maybe they're telling their own jokes, maybe they're, you know, maybe they're just hanging out, they're kind of passively listening to what I'm saying, then they, they're not really, they're an audience member because they're there, they're in the audience, they kind of know who I am, kind of know what I'm doing, but if I have a community member in that space, they're going to be up front. They're going to be wearing the hat. They're going to be wearing the 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 shirt. They're going to be wearing the pin on the the sticker. They got it all. Like they are part of my crew, and this is what I really want to build. Um, I will take a community, a small community of a hundred people who are passionate about what I'm passionate about, and and will show up and support me than I would a thousand people who I never engage with and I never hear from. So this engagement is going to take place from you showing up. Um, it's going to take place from you being consistent. It's going to take place from you uh, providing a space for your community to show up, to build uh, a space for your community. Now, you might not do this right out the gate because the need may not be there, uh, but you want to think about this long term. How do I build a place where I can meet with my community outside of my audio or my audio and video podcast? Because that's one of the the you know, kind of downfalls about podcasting in general, just audio podcasting is there's no real comments. There's reviews, but there's no real engagement opportunities like there is on other social platforms, like there is on, on Bullhorn. That's why I love this platform. I can go live on a podcast player, essentially. I can go live on a podcast player and then um, and, and then have engagement immediately. And there's chat, there's call-ins, there's questions. By the way, if you have any of those, Feel free. Oh, and I just saw my friend Sid jumping in here, so I'm going to bring him on in just a moment. Uh, but I do want to share one more. I'm going to share one more tip, and I'm going to bring Sid in. Um, and this is about building a community. And, I'll, and then I'm going to bring Sid in and let him talk about building a community. Because when you are trying to build your own community, the biggest tip that I have is go be a contributor and engage with zero expectation of a return on investment for you in someone else's community. So to make that really short and simple is go be a contributor and help someone else build the community that you desire to have. Because when you do that, when you go and you show up and you're showing up on, um, you're, you're showing up on, on Bullhorn, on Clubhouse, on Facebook Lives and all this stuff, then you're, you're helping, you're engaging, you're engaging in, in my community and in, in my audience. You're part of my world and you're helping build that. And if you're sharing it out and you're doing all this kind of stuff, you're doing that and it's going to come back to you and people one you're going to be helping people in that community they're going to go oh what does this person do and they're going to get curious and this is why uh, if you go to i think if you go to my facebook page i'll well maybe not now but i did have it pinned my podcast up top that way if i'm in a podcast room and you know people are going hey how do i get a sponsor i go hey here's here's a couple things you can think about then they go oh who's this guy and then they click and then they oh there's creating for money cool i'm going to go listen to it so go be a part of those communities go engage in those communities and now i'm going to bring my friend sid on what is going on sid how's it going man dude thanks for thanks for jumping in and and, and doing the invite i like the shirt man what is that what is that little logo right there I like it. I don't I don't know what it says. It's some a fishing shirt that's made here in Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Thank you. We're going to be called, we're going to call this the, the Sid Billy podcast. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, oh, what's up, man? I got my friend Joey in the audience. He says, I'm so distracted by how good the host looks right now. What are we talking about? Uh, we're, well, let's just keep talking about how good I look. It makes me feel good. Okay, so I am streaming. That's a great question. I'm streaming to YouTube. I'm streaming to Facebook. I'm streaming to Twitch. And I'm streaming to Bullhorn. Uh, well, actually, I'm like on Bullhorn with a virtual camera from Ecamm. Um, but yeah, man. So super amounts of fun. And Yeah, you can't see the Facebook. Um, you can't see the Facebook chat, and I don't even know if I had you coming in through eCam if you could see that either. I'm not 100 percent sure. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, well, you should see. You don't. Know, well, maybe you only see new ones after you jump in. So, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. All right, so Sid, I'm going to share one more thing. So what I've been sharing, and I know you you had a call, and you said, hey, I'm going to jump in later, so I really appreciate you jumping in and would love to, to chat with you a little bit about it. Oh, let's see. He says, oh, hold on a second. Uh, Joey says, I don't think we can hear Sid on on Facebook. Testing one, two. Do it again? Testing one, two. All right. Hey, Facebook. Joey, let me know if Facebook, if you can hear him. I getting I'm getting a loop back, Billy. Oh, you are? In my ear. No. Let me see something. All right. Now try to see if you can do it. Oh, okay, well, I got a problem. So I don't know why I got a problem, but I got a problem. Cause if I Oh, hold on a second. I'm gonna change some settings real quick. Entertain the audience. Do a dance, Sid. Not only is this a new bullhorn, is new, but Billy has a new toy that he's trying to figure out how to use too. Now I think they should be able to hear you now. So I had to change the audio settings. I was using a virtual microphone from Ecamm in case I played any sound effects or whatever uh, through Ecamm. So I think this will fix it. So Sid, give me right, a little so mic check. Is, uh, hey uh, Facebook, this is Sid. Can you hear me? All right, hey, so Sid, coming in loud and clear for you. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got Sid, Sid Meadows. Here we go. So, Sid, I'm talking about stuff that we wish we'd have known before we launched a podcast. Okay, cool. So, Joey says he can hear you. Um, I've talked about a niche. I've talked about consistent quality content. I've talked about uh, building a community. And then I just did a podcast episode on this last thing. But it written, but and this is the why the reason I bring it up is because I get this question all the time. It's what I help podcasters do is to monetize. And a lot of people don't think about monetization before they hit the record button. They get 50, 60 episodes in and go, holy smokes, this is a lot of freaking work. How do I make some money? And then they call me screaming and I go, wait, you got your shows all sideways. Like we got to fix your show first and then we can go yep. try to get you some dollars. Uh, so I think it's really important that you you literally think about what if this is a goal for you to make money, then... You gotta you gotta think about those opportunities first. I didn't do that with my first show. Ended up weird, all sideways. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do this. So merchandise, sponsors, buy me a coffee, community support, membership programs. We just launched one a membership program for our fishing show. It's 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 taken off. I think we got like close to 60 people in there already. Uh, if you're watching this and you watch my fishing show and you haven't joined the membership, please do. And then Sid, you have done a great job building a community as well and launch memberships. But you also monetize your show really early on. I sure uh, did. With your super niche. I mean, you're a super niche podcast. So I'm going to turn yeah. the mic over to you for a minute, let you introduce yourself. I'm going to drink some of my water out of a... Ah, uh, Larry the Lemon. It's He's back. Larry the Lemon over him. here. It's Larry the Lemon. Much. I know, man. He needs to come out of retirement. He does. I need to see him on the Instagram stories. So uh, it's a really great
yeah. research. Know the other podcast and the content that's being produced in the market that you want to go to or the people that you want to talk to, to your point, Billy niche, niche down, but you got to spend some time doing some research to see what's out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that I, research I it, means listening as well. Yeah. Maybe even guesting. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I think that's an underrated strategy before you launch your podcast. And somebody said they lost your audio again, Sid, I think oh, no. I got it back. It's, I think I got a loop back though. It's on, it's, on. it's on my side here. I'm pretty sure. Hello, testing. Is you get loop back? You got a loop back? You good? Nope. No, no loop back. All right. No loop perfect. Back. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to figure this thing out. I got a new device. My baby roadcaster broke. So here we are figuring out another device and how it works. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, so man, I think one thing that you mentioned, and I think this is a good strategy. So there's some of you watching that you're like, you know, starting a podcast would make a lot of sense for me, I think, but I'm not really sure. I don't know the process. Go be a guest on some other shows in your niche and your category that you want to do, and that will kind of give you the the experience of a guest, especially if you want to do a guest show. Uh, I was a guest. I've been a guest on several podcasts, and I'm always intrigued by the onboarding, for lack of a better term, you know, process by each podcast host to to like what process do they put me through? What questions are they asking me pre-show? Do they want to do a pre-show call? Do they not? And you'll kind of find out. You know, what do you like and how do you like to operate uh, in that way? So that's a good thing. And, and maybe you show up and you're like, man, I don't even like podcasting. Like this is, I, I don't want to show up and, and do interviews and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Or being a guest alone solves the problem that you're trying to solve. Maybe it drives business to your, you know, business traffic to your website, um, you know, whatever, all those kinds of things. So Sid. High five for coming in here and dropping gems. I try, man. I try. That's money. So, um, my first show, let's talk about my first show for a second. So, my first show, it, you mentioned earlier, it is monetized. I think it was like episode 30 something that I got monetized on. Um, that show is called The Trend Report. And it's a, it's a really fun podcast. It started in April of 2020. Um, as a result of the shutdown and the lockdown and all that kind of good stuff. And like a lot of entrepreneurs, I found myself with uh, no customers in the month of April and like, okay, what am I going to do now? And I'd had this thing called a podcast on my list to do. So I went to YouTube university and learned how to do a podcast and um, did all the wrong things or a lot of wrong <laughs> things and a lot of right things. Right. So but that podcast is uh, the trend report is focused on those people that manufacture, distribute, and sell office furniture. Yeah, it's an industry that I worked in for thirty years in, when I was in corporate America. About as long and, as I've been alive, Sid. Dang. <laughs> just one second. I now have the controls here. I'm going to turn you off. And, uh, I told you, it's old guy versus new guy, young guy, right? Ding ding, round one. Yeah. <laughs> It goes to Billy for being a smarty pants. No, <laughs> uh, but so that podcast, um, I started it literally, Billy, I think you've heard me tell the story. YouTube university taught me that I needed a quiet environment mm. and I thought my walls I had the wrong microphone. I was using anchor. I wasn't doing video. I was talking into the recording device on anchor and I had pillows all around me to soften the noise so that I sounded good. Well, I sounded like crap. Let's be clear. I sounded like <laughs> crap for the first five episodes. Uh, and then I started figuring out what I needed to do and all that kind of stuff. But it was around episode 30 because I have real conversations with real people. And we talk about issues and things that, that face those people that sell office furniture, right? And it was around episode, I don't know, maybe it's in the 20s. I don't remember. This uh, company called me said, hey, Sid, we'd like to sponsor your podcast. I'd done some work for them as a consultant, and I said, hey, thanks, really appreciate it. Not why I started the podcast. Uh, appreciate you. I mean, I immediately said no. I had no talking about it. And then <laughs> a month later, he calls me back and said, hey, Sid, you know, we'd really like to sponsor your podcast. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, no. And then I got into Clubhouse, okay? This is January of 2020, and I joined a couple of rooms about podcasting, and I heard people start talking about monetization and my eyes were open like what this is a thing i don't have to give up creative control because i associated the two together like a sponsor means they're going to tell me what to do and i didn't want anybody telling me what to do and 
So finally I called the guy back and I said, okay, I'm ready. This is uh, March, 2020. So it's been a year since we've been sponsored. Wow. And I said, Hey, um, I'm ready. We just started our YouTube channel and all that kind of stuff. And I said, uh, let's go. And he said, okay, how much? And I told him and he goes, well, that's a little more than what I was thinking, but it's within the budget. Let's do it. And we now have a, it's a very symbiotic relationship. We get along really well. We support each other. Not only do they sponsor my podcast, I work for them. I'm a consultant for them. I host events for them and do things. And, um, and it's just, it's a really, really great relationship. Oh, Sid double dipping. I like it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a cue from Billy. Money, money, money. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, I think you, you know, you nailed it. Cause here's, and here's the thing too, like, and now we can kind of move into sponsorship. So we talked, you know, I talked a lot about, if you, if you didn't watch it, you can go watch the replay. It's going to be available on Bullhorn um, or Facebook or YouTube or wherever, Twitch. Um, you can go back and kind of hear those tips, but it's talking about monetization in particular with sponsorships it's really important that you, when you're thinking about your niche, um, I started early on when I was thinking about a niche for my for my second fishing podcast that I started to think about who serves that niche and not just the obvious things. Like we have a fishing show and we don't even have a fishing tackle company, which makes no sense to me, but we just don't. Like we have boat dealer, hitch company, a landscaping business. Uh, we do have like a big box store, like a big box retail store. Um, but we started to brainstorm those right relationships because I think a lot of times you'll listen to podcasts and, and it's like, you know, somebody's talking about true crime and maybe there's not like a really good niche for that. And I don't know, like maybe, <laughs> maybe like magnifying glasses or something like, I don't know, like some rubber gloves to clean it, you know, knives. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but they, you know, but you hear the insurance stuff, you hear the, um, nutrient drinks and all this kind of stuff. You hear the, the mattress companies. And while this is good and fine, uh, these are all just like a CPM bought ad. So they're literally just paying a, a certain amount of dollars for 1,000 downloads. And for a small creator, that just isn't going to work. Like I would, you know, it's not going to work. So my value is in my niche audience and knowing who and what sponsors match up really well. Uh, because I want them, similar to you, Sid, I want them to sponsor ye a year at a time, 52 episodes versus, you know, one or two or 10 or four or five. I want it to be such a good fit that they're a part of my community and part of my, my fishing world. And we've been able to accomplish that. So, uh, man, super good tips. Hope everybody can hear Sid. Give me a thumbs up if you're over on Facebook and you're watching this little camera thing's opposite of what I think. Um, and then also want to <laughs> shout out to some people here on Bullhorn. Uh, what's up, Willie McGee? Thanks for joining. Uh, Resty is always. Sam is always. Appreciate you guys uh, jumping in and supporting this. And this is kind of a new project for me, Sid. I, I have my, you know, I have my uh, my podcast on an RSS feed, and then I came across Bullhorn and thought, you know what, this is cool, man. This is a, a podcast listening app. This is a podcast player. And you can go live on it, which is insane to me. Like, I'm like, yeah, this is a great, a great platform. So I'm enjoying going live and using Ecamm to go out to all the other places. And Sid, and I think you and I are brainstorming. We're brainstorming right now. Some, some ways you and a couple other people are, are brainstorming. You know, how can we show up more and help content creators uh, really be a part of the creator economy at a high level, not just you know, side hustles and all that kind of stuff. But how do you, how do you really get paid to, to be a content creator? And I think it's probably one of the greatest times ever. So to, to do that. Oh, it absolutely is a great time to be a content creator, be an entrepreneur because they're, they're synonymous with each other. So I think it's a great time to do that. And there's no doubt that whatever it is you do, whoever you are, what kind of, whatever kind of content that you create, there are people out there searching for your content. And so we want to help you get heard and seen and discovered, if you will. But we also want to be able to help you understand how you can make money doing this because we don't all want to just do things for free all the time, right? I mean, I would if I could, but I can't. Well, I won't. <laughs> I'm here to make money, Billy. And actually, you know, it's funny. One of the reasons that I was late is I was actually sending you an invoice 
for my time oh, tonight. Oh, oh, For the good. time that I'm going to be with you because I, I, I don't, I don't work for free, man. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of money to look this good, buddy. <laughs> it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a, it takes a lot of different eating to look this good. That's all I did. I didn't spend any money. I didn't work oh, out or anything. Gosh. Anyway. Yeah, man. I'm excited. You know, I'm excited about. Um, you know, about sharing these types of things. Cause it, it is a journey, man. I think that's the one thing about content creation. One, it's like, you know, once you, you know, my biggest mistake is I, I wish I would have started earlier. I wish I would have, cause I was inspired early on in life in general, probably three, four years before I really took content creation yeah. seriously. And I wish I would have started earlier and realized that nobody cares as much as I think they care. Like I care way more about my, appearance about my voice about what i say about how i say it all those things way more than anybody else does like nobody really cares <laughs> you know at the so end true, of the man. day you know it's like they're coming they're getting what they need uh, if you're providing that good content that good quality content and then they're on to the next thing they're not sitting there going well billy's haircut's a little too short you know <laughs> it's crazy they're not saying they don't care about any of that stuff except for no, they're you talking about they're talking about how many wrinkles sid has grandpa sid yeah right he's got well, what's interesting about, I think, what you just said, Billy, was you were inspired early. For me, there was a couple of years there that I had no idea that I was creating content. I mean, I write an article, I write a column about professional development and growth for a magazine called The Business of Furniture. And I repurpose that on my blog, so you can go to sidmeadows.com and see all my articles that I've written. What is this, a pitch podcast? Come on, well, Sid. Of course, dude. <laughs> By the way, while you're there, there's a little button that says buy me a coffee. Just kidding. But, but I didn't even realize that I could take that because it was still all new to me, that I could take that article or that column and I could repurpose it on LinkedIn or on medium.com, which I'm not there anymore, or that I could take a paragraph or my tips out of it and put it in a carousel and post it on LinkedIn or post it on Instagram. I didn't understand all that. Yeah. And I think this whole, you know, this creator economy is so new that a lot of people don't realize. And the same thing with my podcast. I had no idea that I could do all that. I would say it's been the last 12 to 18 months that I finally figured out what this means and how to do it. This is content, right? Yeah, These tips absolutely. are content. You can take yeah. this information and turn it into other forms of content that will help other people. So. The creator economy, I think, is growing. It's 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 big now, but it's only going to get bigger as more people leave the workforce and then get into doing on their own and trying to create the life that they really want that doesn't include corporate America. Yeah, man. I think that's a great point. And, you know, it is that there's a lot of stuff you do probably every day that is content creation. And, and you're right, man. You can repurpose it. Like, I've taken these same tips – I ran them on clubhouse rooms. I've done podcasts about them. Uh, I could probably take all the notes in my Google Drive and write an ebook with it, uh, start blogs with it. And it's just putting this stuff out there. And, you know, and I think I kind of got that revelation one time when um, I was traveling with somebody who was a public speaker. And I noticed like every place we went, they spent for like a series of meetings, they would speak on the same thing typically. And I was sitting there like, wait a second, you come up with one message and you're just sharing it over and over and over and over. And it was like, it made a lot of sense because the crowd, you know, the crowds were different and all that kind of stuff. But even on social media, and I was telling my wife this earlier, cause we were talking about a situation. And I said, you know, it's funny because she'll come to me and say, Hey, did you see what so-and-so post on Facebook? Like, look how much weight they lost or, or, you know, look at this new, you know, whatever, like vehicle they got. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't see that. That's crazy. But I'm friends with them, but these algorithms aren't delivering everybody, every piece of content. So you could literally take the same piece of content, post it five different times in a day and attract way, way different crowds of people. Now I'm not a marketing genius. You know, if Katie Brinkley's still watching, she is feel free to come on and talk to us about What's it, up, Katie? but you really can't. Yeah. You really can't over, you can't really oversaturate anything in my opinion. I don't think anything's I'm going to say yes. I agree oh, with let's, you. Oh, okay, but? With a caveat, you have to tailor the content to the platform. I would agree with that. I abs right? absolutely so agree with that. You can't take a TikTok video where you offered your three tips to be a successful entrepreneur or a successful podcaster 
and take that TikTok and put it on LinkedIn and expect that it's going to help because the audience is different and they want different things. The TikTok audience will listen to you and they want 30 to 45 seconds, right? The LinkedIn audience will take up to a couple of minutes, but the LinkedIn audience wants it to have the text across the bottom so that they can read it before they decide mm. to turn gotcha. the audio on to listen to you, right? So you can take the same content, but if you take the same exact post and you post it on Instagram and LinkedIn and you know you, t uh, Twitter, all on the same day, at the same time, it looks exactly the same. Do you know what the result of that is? I've never done that, so I don't know. <laughs> the result of that is is that you – because you, you have – different but similar and not the if not the same followers across all platforms okay? yeah not everybody follows you on all platforms but those that are following you on multiple platforms they tune you out yeah well and the i think it becomes irrelevant because they're like oh i've already <laughs> seen this and they just scroll past you and so you're deterring the engagement yeah yeah so i i like that i like that thought because you can take like okay i'm gonna take this blog post i'm gonna turn it into uh, a real, I'm turning it into a TikTok, but just do it slightly different and you're fine. So I think in that situation, yeah, you could probably oversaturate your, your audience for right. sure with that same content. I guess in my oversaturation thought, I hear this a lot and this is something I feel like keeps a lot of people from hitting record, hitting go live, uh, you know, doing all that stuff is they go, man, there's so many dad podcasts out there. There's so many football podcasts out there. There's so many podcasts about podcasting. There's so many, po you know, all this stuff. And they will just say it's oversaturated. Even some podcast gurus talking just about podcasting here will say you shouldn't start a podcast in an oversaturated, but nothing is oversaturated because it's not oversaturated with me. And I am a unique right. individual. Sid's a unique individual. Everybody listening to this, watching this is unique. And so what happens is, sure, maybe Sam uh, over at Bullhorn decides he wants to start a podcast about, I don't know, like noodling for catfish or whatever. There might be 25 of them out there, but there's not a Sam's noodling for catfish experience or perspective or, or energy or anything like that. That's so. Right. I think that's really important if that is a block or a hindrance for some people, Sid, that they just go, wait, there's that's fine, but it's not me doing it. You know, there's a lot of accountants out there. There's a lot of people swiping groceries at the grocery store behind the register, but it doesn't mean just one person does it. It's like, right. and each of those people have a different style. I go to one register, lady's super nice and easy with my bread. The other lady crushes it on the way through because she hates her job, and I'm trying to get her to create content. I would squash your bread <laughs> if you came through my checkout line. I know you would, Sid. <laughs> I'm going to like, shoot. Billy doesn't need the spread. It's not good for him. I'm moving to your hometown just to work at a grocery store so I can crush your chips and stuff on the way through. I need to know which one it is so I don't go to that grocery store. Uh, I'll just get a job at all of them. <laughs> make make sure my odds you're, are good. You're spot on. There's only one you. There's only one of your opinion and your thoughts and your original ideas about certain things. And it's like I said a few minutes ago. There is somebody out there on the other side of this screen or the other side of your ear, way, or the other side of the microphone, whatever it is, other side of the screen reading your blog that needs to hear your message. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, And they'll never hear it if you don't share it. And so, Sid, speaking of that, and I use this, I mean, I say this all the time, or, or, or maybe you've probably heard me, but actually, you know what? I'm not going to say it. Let me ask you this. Tell me a moment in your life where somebody said something, either on a podcast, a business meeting, one of your mentors or something, and it just like flip, flipped a switch and you went to another level. You've, have you had those moments? Oh, gosh, yes. I've had those moments and I'm trying to filter through <clears throat> the ones that. So there was something that, and this is not a new saying, it was new to me, but I remember I was working on some things and I was working in a co-working space at this point. So I had a small little office. I had this huge glass board on the wall where I write down, brainstorm all my ideas and stuff. And I was talking to somebody on the phone and uh, we were talking about getting things done and accomplishing things and, you know, getting the blog written or getting the social media post done or getting the episode edited or recorded or whatever. And she said to me, you know, Sid, Done is better than perfect. 
And that was a moment that I realized that I was striving for a perfection that I was never going to get. And as you said a few minutes ago, Billy, people don't want perfection. They just want you. They want your voice. They want to hear your opinion. They want to read your thoughts. And so, you know, it was an aha moment for me to just like, okay, quit trying to be perfect and rigid and tighten your tie up and all that kind of stuff. (laughs) Just do it and get it done because people need it. So just remembering that done is better than perfect. And that was actually a friend that told me that. And I, her name is Beth. And ironically or not enough, that was a memory on my Facebook feed yesterday where I thanked her for telling me that. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Beth has set Sid free. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, man, and you know, yeah. and that happened for me too, man. I was, um, and I don't know if even if a lot of people know this, but I dropped out of high school. I was one credit away and I said, you know what? I'm just not doing it. Like it was an algebra class. I couldn't pass like three times or something. I was just dumb with math unless it had, you know, it was green with, with faces of dead presidents on it. I just couldn't figure it out. And so I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to get my GED. And so I did, but to do, to be able to get my GED and to get in the program, I had to have a job and I didn't at that moment. And so a friend of mine knew somebody that owned a car garage and he said, Hey, why don't you come work for me? And, and you can just clean the garage. That's all you do. You clean the walls. Here's a brush. Here's some soap. Here's a bucket. And you just clean. So I got in there and I was all excited and energized and man, I started cleaning as fast as I possibly could. And within probably three to four days, I was done with that project. Like he had told me, clean the whole garage, all the bricks and blocks and all the dust and all the stuff. And so I went through and I, I, you know, three or four days later, I went to him and was like, Hey, you know, I'm finished up. I finished it. And he goes, all right, let's go take a look. So he goes and he's obviously he's finding dust, he's finding dirt and he's finding whatever. And and he's picking out all these spots where I didn't do well at all. And, um, and so he's like, he's like, you know, I probably should just go ahead and let you go because you're not doing a quality job. And I was like, man, oh, hold on. Like, I'll do it again. Like, let me have another chance. He said, a couple of things you got to figure out in life. One is if you, if you work yourself out of a job, you're just not going to have a job. So take your time and do it right. And he's like, and the second thing you need to learn in your life is quality is greater than quantity. And that's why I got that. That's why I repeat it all the time. That's why I share it all the time. And it was that moment in that stinky garage, grease all over the place and car parts and all this crap and dust that my whole world was changed, shifted at 18 years old, a high school dropout. And at that moment, I was like, man, I got to start doing this better, like this thing called life. And so it was that moment that literally changed you know, a lot of my, you know, and there's multiple moments for multiple people throughout my life and inspiration, all that kind of stuff. But that was the thing, man. And it was, and it was the power of someone saying what was on the inside of them, what they had to say, their message that changed my whole universe. And so I think that is the power of podcasting. That is the power of live streaming. That is the power of sharing your message is there's somebody on the other side with these headphones in that's might be struggling with whatever you've struggled with and overcame that might, you know, not understand what you understand. And when we put these keys out there and let on people, you know, and it unlocks people, man, it unlocks their destiny. And so I think that's why I'm so passionate about podcasting, about creating media, about showing up and saying, Hey, is it the tech thing that's keeping you? Let me help you with that. Is it the, which obviously tonight I didn't display very well as I was having all (laughs) kinds of tech issues. Um, Or, you know, is it money? Let's figure out how to make some, you know, it's all those things. Like how do we continue to get people's voices out if they feel like that's what they need to do? And so, yeah, man, love the conversation, dude. It's been good. It's a great story. I've heard you tell that story before, and it's a great story because it's really powerful because, you know, the person that shared that story with you shared that story with you because of something that happened in their life. Yeah. Right? Some experience that they had, and that's what really pushed them to share that story with you. Yeah, man. Uh, Powerful. I'll be right back. My dog's going crazy. There's somebody banging on the door. I'll be right back. All right, man. Knock it out. Yeah, no worries. I'll bring you back on here in a minute. Hope you guys are enjoying the the show. This is the Creating for Money um, Bullhorn. Not really Bullhorn exclusive because I'm I'm going other places, but I discovered uh, Bullhorn.fm. a couple, maybe a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and really fell in love with the platform. It's a live stream platform right onto a podcast player, which I think is really cool. 
And so I decided to start making some additional content outside of my regular RSS feed. So that's what we're doing. So if you haven't followed on here, if you haven't got a Bullhorn uh, app, if you haven't downloaded the app, download the app. Make sure you follow me on here. I'm going to start doing ramping up some more content. And then also, if you are a content creator, uh, and really, and when I say this, I'm talking anything, not just Web3 or NFTs or podcasting or YouTubing or anything. But if you create something and you sell it and you make money off of it, um, I want to invite you to invite yourself onto the show uh, and do some of these live shows. So I'm looking for more people to come on uh, to come on live, similar to what Sid and I are doing. And Sid may be joining me, my friend Chris may be joining me, uh, to really just have this conversation about the creator economy and how it is, you know, powerful and how it can literally change your life. And if that's your passion and you can, and you can come on and inspire the people, uh, I want to openly invite people to reach out to me. It's billy at creatingformoney.com. Uh, just send me your information, maybe a little bit about yourself. And then, um, if it's a, if it's a good fit, if we can come up with a show concept, then we will officially invite you. All right. Sid's back. He put a muzzle on that dog. Finally did the three of them, three dogs, but wow. It was a really good delivery though. It was a delivery and it was a delivery of a case of wine. So it was a really good delivery. (laughs) So sorry. Sorry, everybody. I know you missed me while I was gone there for 45 seconds, but hopefully Billy held the fort down. Yeah, man. I was holding it down. I was talking about Bullhorn, how cool it was, how people should follow us. And then if they wanted to, you know, join the show at some point to reach out to me. And Nick over here on Bullhorn says, uh, well, earlier in the conversation that tailoring uh, content to the to the platform is so important, as you talked about earlier, Sid. And he says, I love these live streams, man. So polished. Great stuff. Um, I don't Well, thank you. Why, why don't you yeah. critique Billy now? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that remove button? Where did that thing go? You know what? If hey, it, Billy, I go, can't see the chat. So did he put that in the chat or did he put it yeah, in the Yeah, but can you scroll down on your screen? I can. I can't see the chat. There's nothing so on the there. Bullhorn folks are listening. I mean, I see the switch on my toggle between the co-host and then the chat. There's nothing in the chat and there's no Q&A. Um, wait, hold on. So if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, is there anything? My view looks There's, different than yours, I'm sure. No, uh-uh. Nothing? Nothing. I don't know, man. Maybe You know what? Maybe we walk to a demo. Like, I wonder if they – I know they do demos for the host side. And by the way, if anybody's interested in that, once again, my email, I'll put it in the uh, in the chat, and I'll connect you with those guys over there. Nick uh, does a fantastic job. Um, now, I don't know, Sid, if they do a tutorial of how to be a, a co-host on here, uh, but I can, probably, I can probably get them to help you out, man, if that's what you need. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something <laughs> mean. I was about to put you on mute. <laughs> Not that I have that power, but I was going to pretend. Anyway. Yeah, there's a reason why you're not a moderator on here, Sid, because you'll put me in the audience, <laughs> yeah. you'll mute me, you'll put funny faces well, on me. I mean, that one time that you gave me the moderator badge in Clubhouse and I sent you to the audience, you need to admit to all the people listening on all the platforms, Twitch, Facebook, no. here no. on Bullhorn, you no. need to admit you need to admit that nope. you were acting out and you deserve to go to the audience. I was acting out. It was my room. I can do whatever I want. What are you talking about? <laughs> but you were acting out, so I had to send you to the audience. Okay, Dad. Because... <laughs> 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 yeah, right. uh... I mean, I'm going to – Billy, they need to get filters on this dang thing, dude. I'm no, gonna you look fine. Lighting, maybe a lower quality camera here, <laughs> step further away. If, so it gets any lo- if your camera gets any lower quality, Sid, you'll turn into an unborn fetus on an ultrasound. All right, chill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness, dude! That's, <laughs> I have not heard that before. That's dude, I make that joke every week because uh, <laughs> anyway, I have some trouble with a different platform on my on my Mac with with the, with the interview mode, and some reason my co-host dude he always just shows up like a like just a unborn fetus on an ultrasound is what it looks like. I'm like, this is insane. So. <laughs> That is awesome. That's awesome. Well, Sid, I've been rock and rolling for about an hour, a little over. I think I'm going to close this thing down, but I want to give you an opportunity. Any last words of encouragement? And then, you know, once again, Sid and I, let us know if you've enjoyed us, and we could banter pretty hard and probably get in trouble. Um, We won't. We won't. We'll behave ourselves. Um, But if you like this content, if you like stuff like this, if you want us to create more content about encouraging people in the creator economy and it won't just be how to stuff and tips from us but you know what's going on in the creator economy what kind of opportunities are there so if that's something you want 
give us a big thumbs up and wherever you're watching. Um, and then if you're on Bullhorn, you know, same thing. And if you go to Bullhorn, by the way, for future reference, you can actually call in and call into the show, which is a really super cool feature. Uh, and we can bring you live and you can chat with us. So that'll be fun. But anyway, Sid, sorry to ask you a question and not let you answer it. Any last words here? So that really explains to me why you why we need to probably have a course on interview skills. Because Dude, I'm ter- <laughs> I'm terrible at interviews. I'm just gonna put it out there. No, no. So you know, here's the thing that I would tell you about content creation, whatever wh- whoever you are, wherever you are, is quit overthinking it. Quit overthinking it. Get out of your own way because we all do it. I'm guilty of it. Billy's guilty of it. Just stop overthinking and put content out there. See how it resonates with your community and make adjustments from there. Yeah, love it, man. And you, you never know till you try. You know, that, that's, that's the right. thing. It's just like this. That's just like this. A new platform for me. I'm trying it. I'm loving it. Uh, the Bullhorn guys are, are and gals are in the chat. They're, you know, they're supportive. Uh, and by the way, speaking of chat, Sam said that they're going to look into the um, into the ghost chat there on your side. I'm going to take a screenshot of it real quick. Hang on, I'm going to seen it with my, take it with my phone, and then I'll send you a picture of it. So and Sam, it could be user error. I mean, more than Sam, likely, that's not true. More than likely, it's user error. Yeah, it's not true. Where's Probably. The mute? You need a co-host <laughs> mute button, please, no so co- that I can mute no, the youngsters. No co-host mute to, button. Yes, co-host mute button. Oh, actually, there is a co-host mute button right here. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> too funny, too funny. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. They have that feature, Smarty Sid. Guy. I'm going to take advantage <laughs> of it more. They have a remove so, yeah. feature, too. Yeah, thank you, Sam, for looking into it. Probably Billy said it, probably set the platform up wrong as he was inviting <laughs> me in. So it's probably user error there. But, you know, Billy, <laughs> I enjoy our chats. We chat a lot. We always have a lot of fun. We have great ideas. and uh, But I think most importantly, what we do in – platforms like this or clubhouse or wherever we might be hanging out together our entire focus is just to help entrepreneurs and content creators find the success that they want yeah and that's what we do yeah a variety of topics yeah man absolutely so hit that follow button if you haven't wherever you're watching that and we'll see you all in the uh in the next episode and i think i got a little closing slide sid thank you so much man i'll catch you later see ya oh i gotta kick you out (laughs) 